Welcome to the last discussion para sa value added tax kung saan i-discuss na natin yung mga administrative provisions and yung minimal changes under the CREATE law. Again, if we can recall, those who are registrable as VAT taxpayers ay yung may mga gross selling price or gross receipts. GSP or GR for the past 12 months exceeded 3 million. No? So, yung historical sales nila exceeded 3 million pesos. On the other hand, registrable din yung mga businesses no? na yung GSP or GR nila is reasonably expected to exceed 3 million pesos for the next 12 months. And of course, yung mga gustong magparegister as what? As long as, or even though hindi nila nasasatisfy ito, they could register as VAT taxpayers. For purposes of determining the GSP or GR, yung mga mag-asawa daw are considered separate taxpayers. Ibig sabihin, halimbawa, si lalaki at si babae ay merong negosyo sila, no? Magkaiba sila na negosyo, yung isa sale of goods, yung isa sale of services. Yung identification if they are subject to VAT, kung VAT registrable sila, ay hindi kailangan pagsamahin yung kanila GSP or GR para i-compare doon sa 3 million. Kasi sabi nga dito sa VAT, they are separate taxpayers. Yung separation na yon ng GSP or GR would apply only to spouses. Pero when it comes naman sa isang single uh, entity or single taxpayer na uh, merong two or more lines of businesses, yan, meron silang two or more lines of businesses, i-aggregate yun, pagsasamasamahin, para i-compare doon sa threshold na 3 million pesos. Now, if you have a business in Quezon City, alimbawa, and you have a business in Bulacan, so pagsasamahin yon as long as you are single taxpayer, pagsasamahin para malaman if you are subject to VAT, kung nag ka or mag breach ka ng 3 million pesos na mark. For the payment of VAT registration, kailangan natin mag-accomplish ng BIR form number 0605. So, yung BIR form 0605 is a general form yan sa BIR na ginagamit dun sa mga payments na hindi nagre-require ng tax return. Okay, so, one of the uses lang ng 0605 yung payments para sa VAT registration. And yung payments para sa VAT registration, 500 pesos. Okay, 500 pesos for every separate or distinct establishment. So, kung meron ka mga branches, no, yung main branch mo, tapos yung mga branch mo, kailangan mong i-register yon separately and 500 pesos each. And then, yearly, nagkakaroon tayo na registration pa rin. No? So, may annual registration na 500 pesos na binabayaran not later than January 31 every year. And apart from registering your business, no, yung business mo in general as a VAT registered entity, kailangan natin mag-register din ng ibang items such as yung books of accounts natin. No? And i-register din natin yung ating mga SIs and ORs as VAT invoices or VAT OR. Kailangan natin i-register yan bago gamitin kasi kung gagamitin natin yung mga yan na hindi natin i-register, malamang hindi yan credit as VAT transactions. Now, we need to remember na all barter, lease, exchange, sale of goods or services, all blessed GS shall be issued a corresponding VAT invoice or VAT OR. All purchases covered by invoices or receipts other than VAT invoice or VAT OR shall not give rise to any input tax. If you can remember dun sa previous discussions natin na kaya ka nagkakaroon ng nire-record na input or output VAT dahil meron kang ebidensya. Ngayon, kahit na nagbayad ka, okay, kung hindi naman evidence ng resibo yon, ng invoice or, or ng OR, hindi tayo makakapag-claim ng VAT. And yung mga receipts na yon, okay, dapat uh, should be made at least in duplicate. Yung isa para sa buyer, para sa sa'yo, at yung isa para doon sa seller. Kaya lagi tayong mag-ask for a receipt. Now, kung pupunta tayo sa mga groceries, no? sa mga groceries na medyo malalaki, kung titignan natin yung resibo doon sa ilalim, makikita na natin doon yung tatlong types ng transaction with regards to VAT. Yung VATABLE, exempt and zero rated sales kasi inaalaw ng batas na yung mga sales na yun okay, magkaasama sa isang resibo pwede as long as those items are clearly indicated and separated 
no, para hindi naman sayang sa papel. So, inaalaw ng batas yon But registered taxpayers may issue a single invoice slash receipt involving VAT and non-VAT transactions provided that the same clearly indicates the breakdown of taxable, exempt, and zero rated transactions and the computation of appropriate VAT. Now, in such cases na hindi ka makapag-issue ng iisang resibo lang, syempre, di mo naman pipilitin kung hindi talaga kaya, so pwede kang mag-issue ng separate na resibo. O, single receipt para doon sa batable, single receipt para doon sa exempt, at single receipt para doon sa zero rated. As long as clearly indicated pa rin kung anong klase ng transaction yon, ba kasi nag-issue ka ng zero rated, tapos hindi clearly indicated, nag-claim si customer mo ng 12%, so mahirap yon or nag-issue ka rin ng exempt, pero nag-claim si customer mo ng 12% VAT. Uh, hindi pwede yon Kaya dapat clearly indicated pa rin kung separate invoices yung ating gagamitin for VAT-related sales. Now, makikita natin dito sa slide yung mga contents of VAT invoice or VAT OR. So, kung papansinin mo, pagka ikaw bumili kahit ng slurpee lang sa 7-11, dati 5 piso lang yun. Ang haba pa rin ng resibo kasi nga VAT registered taxpayer ang 7-11 eh kasi may regulation tayo na nagdidictate kung anong mga items yung dapat nakalagay sa VAT invoice no? so ito yung mga examples ng mga items na makikita dapat natin doon sa VAT invoice or VAT OR makikita natin doon yung name seller description of goods or properties or nature of service unit cost, quantity date of transaction tin of buyer if but registered and amount exceeds 1k address of buyer business style of buyer name of buyer statement that the seller is VAT registered followed by its tin ito napaka importante nito para ma-identify natin na VAT registered siya no? business address of seller business style of seller purchase price plus VAT and authority to print ATP receipt number Obviously, ito yung mga items na kailangang makita no, para we can reasonably assume na yung entity na yon is VAT taxpayer, it's, it is a legal entity, okay? And we can claim input VAT in case na yung ating transactions ay subject to 12% VAT. And for the invoicing requirements, dapat nating tandaan only Okay, only VAT registered persons are required to print their TIN followed by the word VAT in their invoice or OR. Said document shall be considered as VAT invoice or VAT OR. Again, hindi lang sapat na nakalagay doon na may breakdown, na may VATable sales doon sa resibo. Kaya required din na dapat nakalagay or indicated na yung nagbenta, yung seller, yung entity ay VAT registered taxpayer at yun nga ay malalaman or maiintindihan natin kapag nakita natin yung resibo, nakita natin yung TIN and then followed by the word VAT Now, syempre merong mga errors no? For example ito, non-VAT registered persons who issues an invoice or OR showing its TIN followed by the word VAT it shall be liable to Una, percentage tax appropriately applicable to its transactions. Two, VAT due on the transaction without the benefit of input taxes. And three, 50% surcharge. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Ang ibig sabihin nito, kung hindi ka naman subject sa VAT, wag na wag na wag ka maglalagay ng word na VAT after ng TIN mo. Bakit? Kasi, sinasabi nga natin na kapag ka ikaw ay VAT registered, yung sales mo is subject to VAT, okay, generally subject to VAT and pag generally subject to VAT yon, yung bumili sa'yo, if they are VAT registered as well, magkiklaim sila ng input, now kapag ka hindi ka naman VAT registered, pero yung buyers mo, yung mga customers mo they assumed na you are VAT registered magkiklaim sila ng input kahit na hindi sila nagbayad ng input VAT, and as for you nagka, gumawa ka ng problema kasi, yung customer mo, nag-claim siya ng input VAT. Eh, wala naman talaga dapat siya i-claim na input VAT. Diba? So, parang nagkaroon siya ng libreng credit, no? libreng deduction sa kanyang output. And on your part, magiging liable ka doon. Kaya kahit na hindi ka naningil, okay, hindi ka naningil ng output VAT, pero nilagay mo na yung resibo mo is 
VAT invoice or VAT OR. Kahit wala kang nasingil na VAT doon, magiging liable ka sa output VAT nung sale na yon. Okay? Magkakaroon ka ng output VAT sa sale na yon. And what's worse, yung transaction mo na yon na may output VAT, okay, dahil sa error mo, wala kang pwedeng i-credit na input VAT. Kasi first and foremost, wala ka naman talagang input VAT. And kaya ka lang binigyan ng output VAT kasi naggawa ka, okay, nagkaroon ng amounts doon sa yung customer mo ng input VAT na wala naman dapat. And on top of that, syempre hindi ka liable sa VAT which eh, which makes you liable to another business tax. Yun ngang percentage tax. So magiging dalawa yung yung business tax, may VAT ka na, may percentage tax ka na, yun naman talaga yung dapat sa And magkakaroon ka pa ng 50% na surcharge. Kaya mag-iingat tayo, no? So wag na wag tayong mag-i-issue ng resibo na VAT kung hindi naman tayo VAT registered. Wag layo maglalagay ng word na VAT after ng TIN natin kasi i-assume na nga nung, nung customer natin na makakapag-claim sila ng input VAT which in turn hindi naman dapat na nagkaroon ng benefit yung customer mo. Ikaw mag-shoulder nun kasi in the first place hindi naman dapat siya nakapag-claim ng input VAT doon sa transaction with you. Now, sabi natin kanina, kapag ka ang isang resibo, dapat clearly indicated doon yung mga types of transactions kung pagsasamasamahin natin yung mga subjects sa 12%, sa 0%, at yung mga exempt. Pero, in such cases na hindi natin malinaw na na-indicate yun doon sa resibo, okay, VAT registered persons who issue a VAT invoice or VAT OR for VAT exempt transactions, but fails to display prominently on the invoice or OR the term VAT exempt sale shall be liable to VAT. So, kasi magmi-mislead tayo ng ating customers and mahirap yon Kaya, dapat clearly indicated doon na VAT exempt, 12% or 0% para hindi tayo magkakaroon ng maling claims. Uh, hindi magkakaroon ng maling claims yung mga customers natin. Kasi at the end, tayo pa rin yung magiging liable doon. Now, for the VAT filing, no? meron tayong monthly VAT declaration. Nagagamit tayo ng BIR form 2550M. So, hindi naman tayo dapat malito kasi M nga. No? So, monthly. Tapos, yung manual filing nito, not later than 20th day following the end of the month. No? So, the following month, not later than 20th day. Kapag ka manual filing, pero kapag ka gumamit ka ng EFPS, ang EFPS is yung Electronic Filing and Payment System ni BIR, yung deadline nun would be 21 to 25 days following the end of the month depending on the business industries group. Sa EFPS kasi, meron tayo mga groups doon. No? So, groups A, B, C, D. Tapos, yung kada group na yun, naka-designate doon kung ilang days following the end of the month yung deadline ng payment. And, di na natin ilalagay yun dito kasi medyo irrelevant na yun kasi masyadong marami yun, masyadong marami yung groups na yun. So, if you're to look dun sa industry or dun sa deadline na uh, kailangan mong habulin, alamin mo muna kung anong industry ka and then tignan mo na lang dun sa website ng BIR kung anong group yung industry na kinabibilangan mo. And, apart from the monthly ano, declarations, no, meron tayong quarterly quarterly VAT declarations na gagamit tayo ng BIR, BIR form 2550Q. Okay, so Q quarterly. No, so, meron tayong monthly, covered noon yung isang buwan, and then meron tayo ng quarterly, covered na yung isang quarter na yon. So, para nag-accumulate lang, and syempre may payments ka na naman nun, may credit ka na nun. And itong quarterly VAT declarations is filed within 25 days okay within 25 days following the close of the taxable quarter and with regards po sa quarters ng VAT calendar quarter po tayo kasi yung VAT it follows the calendar year now sabi natin yung mga gusto magpa-register at yung mga VAT registrable persons kailangan magpa-register sa VAT kailangan now Siyempre, hindi naman natin maaalis yung katotohanan, lalo na sa pandemya ngayon, sa pandemic ngayon, no? Na yung GSP or GR, hindi na exceed ng 3 million. 
Kaya in such cases, hindi na kailangan maging bat registered ng isang entity. And pwede nating i-cancel yung ating bat registration para hindi na tayo magiging liable sa bat. Kasi mabisado na mabigat yon para sa entities with less than 3 million ang kadilang GSP or GR. Now, VAT registered entities may cancel VAT registration if GSP or GR is validly demonstrated not to exceed, okay, not to exceed 3 million for the next 12 months and it has ceased to carry trade or business and does not expect to recommence within the next 12 months. Siguro para sa mga businesses sa uh, dahil sa pandemic ngayon, magagamit nila yung 1. No? Pero yung 2, siguro mahirap maging reason yan dahil every now and then naman, pagka lumuluwag yung, mga quarant yung quarantine, nakakapagbukas pa rin. Kasi sabi dito, within the next 12 months, ang taon. So, most likely na ang reason dahil sa pandemic ngayon is yung number 1. And the cancellation shall be effective from the first day of the following month the cancellation was approved kaya kung tayo po ay magpapakancel ng VAT registration no siguraduhin natin na ano early in the early in the month tayo magpakancel kasi ang sabi dito first day of the following month the cancellation was approved cancellation was approved not the cancellation was submitted eh baka matagal halimbawa nag pa submit ka ng 27 no 27 eh paano kapag ka hindi agad na approve within the month no so na approve next month na uh, halimbawa sa third day nung susunod na buwan eh di sa susunod na buwan ka pa ulit mag ano makaka-cancel yung VAT registration mo and in such cases na ganun kung sa 3 halimbawa 27 ka halimbawa January 27 ka na submit na approve February 3 yung February na yon subject to VAT ka pa rin dahil yung first day of the following month sa March 1 ka pa mag start lang hindi ka na VAT registered kaya kung magkakancel tayo ng VAT registration natin sana agahan natin para ma-approve agad at hindi na tumalon sa susunod na buwan and finally dito na tayo sa changes under the create law bagong bago fresh na fresh yung mga changes under the create law but first, what is CREATE? No? So, CREATE means Corporate Recovery and Tax Incentives for Enterprises. Yan, CREATE. And it aimed to counter the effects of COVID-19 on the Philippine economy and reduce financial burden on foreign and domestic companies to induce foreign and local investors to invest in the country. Sa business taxes, sa VAT, may uh, minimal lang yung changes under CREATE. May dinagdag. And doon naman sa percentage tax, medyo significant din kasi uh, i-discuss naman natin yun sa pag nasa OPT na tayo. Pero in general, yung create, malaki yung changes niyan. Significant yung change niya para doon sa income tax, no? corporate income tax, CIT. And yun naman talaga yung objective ng create law na kumbaga magkaroon ng ease of doing business yung mga domestic and foreign entities dito sa Pilipinas kasi ang uh, Philippines ay isa sa may pinakamalaking income tax sa ASEAN and binigay yung CREATE ginawa yung CREATE para makahabol tayo doon sa ating mga ASEAN neighbors para makapag attract tayo ng mga foreign investors again bagong bago the CREATE was passed into law on March 26, 2021 for the first change sa VAT under the CREATE law ito Sale, importation, printing, or publication of books and any newspaper, magazine, journal, review bulletin, or any such educational reading material covered by the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, an agreement on the importation of educational, scientific, and cultural materials, including the digital or electronic format thereof. Provided that the materials enumerated herein are not devoted principally to the publication of paid advertisements. Provided further that the materials enumerated herein are compliant with the requirements set forth by the National Book Development Board pursuant to RA number 8047. Looks familiar right? Kasi it's almost the same toon sa isa nating exemption dun sa mga books, di ba? Nadagdagan lang siya nung mga 
uh, materials na under nung UNESCO agreement dun sa importation of educational, scientific, and cultural materials including the digital or electronic format. No? So, ginawa itong batas na ito dahil relevant ito now more than ever dahil nga, obviously, tulad ng kinagawa natin ngayon, online class na sa mga schools from the uh, preschool to postgraduate. Kaya, binibigyan na tayo ng benefit na hindi nalagyan ng bat pa yung purchases ng mga educational materials na yon. Another one, uh, cancer, mental illness, tuberculosis, and kidney diseases beginning January 1, 2021, this pertains dun sa mga gamot. If you can remember dun sa discussions natin nung sa exemptions, sabi starting ito January 1, 2023. Okay? 2023. Pero dahil sa create law, starting na siya ng January 1, 2021. And honestly, okay, honestly, this is a very, very, very great news para sa ating mga kababayan na nagsasuffer sa mga sakit na ito. Okay? Kasi in the first place, bakit mo nga ba binigay sa 2023 yan? I remember, nag-grant pa ako dyan sa previous discussion, right? Kasi kung gusto natin makatulong sa kababayan natin, dapat ibigay na natin agad sa kanila yung benefit na makapagpagamot sila uh, sa mas murang halaga and yun nga, starting January 1, 2021 exempt na yung ano, yung mga gamot for cancer, mental illness, tuberculosis and kidney diseases however, yung mga gamot na ito ay subject doon sa approval ng DOH, so maglalabas si DOH ng mga specific drugs lang na covered nitong provision na ito and lastly Yung create law, ina-address din niya yung problem na dinala ng COVID-19. Kaya uh, beginning January 1, 2021 to December 31, 2023, the sale or importation of capital equipment, its spare parts, and raw materials necessary for the production of personal protective equipment, PPE, components such as coveralls, gown, surgical cap, Surgical mask, N95 mask, scrub suits, goggles, and face shield, double or surgical gloves, dedicated shoes, and shoe covers for COVID-19 prevention. All drugs, vaccines, and medical devices specifically prescribed and directly used for the treatment of COVID-19 and drugs for the treatment of COVID-19 approved by the Food and Drug Administration for use in clinical trials including raw materials directly necessary for the production of such drugs are now exempt from VAT. Okay, so itong mga items nito are now exempt from VAT. However, may catch dito, dapat hindi available sa Pilipinas yung mga materials and ingredients na bibili overseas. Kasi kung available naman sa Pilipinas tapos bumili ka pa rin sa ibang bansa, that would be subject to uh, VAT. Eh, okay nga naman, tama nga naman. Kasi kung meron naman dito sa Pilipinas, bakit pa tayo bibili abroad? Diba? So, yun lang mga hindi available dito sa Philippines na materials and ingredients relevant sa ating fight against COVID-19 ay yung magiging exempt from VAT. Doon sa Create Law, Meron kasing beneto doon si President na ilang pro, na provisions para doon sa real estate and hindi na natin sinama yun kasi beneto nga. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya kasama doon sa magiging uh, changes under the CREATE law. And doon kasi sa uh, changes na yon sa beneto na changes na yon ang gusto lang naman mangyari doon, taasan yung threshold ng but exempt sale ng real properties. And the president, according to sa mga nabasa natin, the president deemed it very usurious na. No? So, pro na siya to abuse yung nataasan pa yung threshold na yon kaya vineto yon. So, but hopefully, mataasan pa rin, uh, hindi na lang same nung unang pinropose. I hope we have learned something dito sa bat discussions natin. Okay, so but na encounter natin on a daily basis kapag ka bumibili tayo makikita natin sa resibo 12% etc etc yes but is about the 12% imposition of value added tax however sana maintindihan natin yung essence and reason why there is the value added tax 
for the next discussions, pupunta na tayo dun sa isa pang kind, okay, ng business taxes, which is, which is the percentage tax. And dun naman sa discussions na yun, magiging maliit lang yun. Okay, kasi sabi nga natin, what is the general rule and yung percent tax. Percentage tax would be the exception. See you on those discussions. Thank you.